In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of, of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My dear brothers, uh, it is a pleasure once again to be here at the Church of St. Bartholomew to celebrate the Holy Mysteries. This Thursday, where officially we can now accommodate and welcome uh, uh, the congregation so we can have uh, communicants with, uh, with us. Uh, and thanks be to God for that. We carry on praying so that uh, a number of um, um, people who get the, the virus uh, decreases uh, dramatically. And we also pray that the so-called vaccines, the, the numerous vaccines that are coming up, will be rolled out soon. And soon we have this pandemic ended. So today, so this season, this is the season of Advent, season of preparation, and today specifically we comm commemorate Francis Xavier, uh, a missionary and uh, apostle to the Indies, to the Indies, or more specifically to Asia, or, well, to Asia, more specifically to India, Ceylon, Japan, and China. So let us now confess our sins to prepare ourselves to celebrate the Holy Mysteries. And we allow the Holy Spirit, as we pray, to remind us of our faults, of our failures, of our sins by commission and our sins by omission. Heavenly Father, you have created the universe of light. Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to lit the first candle of Advent, of our, our Advent wreath, as a reminder that the, the light of Christ is coming to our midst and it is increasingly becoming brighter and brighter. The Lord be with you. So let us pray. God our Father, who by the preaching of your servant Francis brought many peoples of Asia to yourself, give his zeal for the faith to all who believe in you, that your church may rejoice in continued growth through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us now give the readings for today. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. On that day this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. He steps up in victory, like walls and bulwarks. Open the gates so that the righteous nation that keeps faith may enter in. Those of steadfast mind, you keep in peace. In peace because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in the Lord God you have an everlasting rock. 
for he has brought low the inhabitants of the height, the lofty city he lays low. He lays it low to the ground, casts it to the dust. The foot tramples it, the feet of the poor, the steps of the needy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, let us stand to hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So today we commemorate Francis, Francis Xavier, should I say Francisco Xavier in Portuguese or Francisco Javier in Spanish. He was actually uh, a Spaniard, he was born uh, in Spain, but actually he started his minis minis ministry, uh, his mission missionary endeavor uh, under the auspices of the Portuguese crown. Uh, on the 16th century, when he started his ministry in Asia, the world was split in two, let us say, in two world powers. Um, the, the Spanish crowd, uh, crown had the, the monopoly of, let us say, the, the Americas, the, the, the part to the west of the world, and Portugal had the, the monopoly or the control of the uh, eastern part of the world, so including Africa and Asia. That's how the world was divided. And these two world powers then also had the monopoly of all of the Christian missionary efforts done on their lands. And therefore, the Portuguese uh, king of the time um, supported um, Francis uh, as a Jesuit to go to all of those lands um, belonging to the king of Portugal. So he they did a great job of evangelization in India, more specifically in Goa, which was uh, one of the three Portuguese territories in India. Um, and he converted people to the thousands. He baptized people to the thousands. It, it, where there was even an, an event where he had to sprinkle water to thousands of people in one single day in order to get all of them baptized. We may question his methods, but uh, we uh, can see his zeal to spread the gospel, to evangelize people, to bring them to Christ. He, he, so he didn't only stay in India, but he went to Ceylon, Malacca, Malaya, and he was sent to Japan. Actually, he convinced the Portuguese king to be part of the Portuguese embassy to, to Japan, and, and, and therefore, from that visit, to that, from that embassy to Japan, he started the ministry, ministry work of Jesuits uh, in Japan. And so we are most thankful for his evangelistic zeal, for his methods. Uh, somehow, um, when we compare him to other uh, evangelists like um, Billy Graham and others, I mean, he had so little means and he converted many, probably more people or as many people as they did. He didn't have obviously a television, he didn't have access to the, the technology that we have today, and, but nevertheless, he converted many souls to Christ. So may we be inspired by his example, may be, we be inspired by his zeal to spread the gospel, and may we also be open to enter um, a fruitful dialogue 
with different cultures and different cultures, different cultures and different religions in order to uh, bring about harmony and uh, goodwill between peoples. Amen. Now we present our intercessions before the Lord. In joyful ex expectation of his coming to our aid, we pray to Jesus. Come to your church as Lord and Judge. We pray for our leaders, Archbishop Justin, Archbishop uh, Stephen, for our own Bishop Peter. Help us to live in the light of your coming and give us a longing for your kingdom. Maranatha, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to your world as King of the nations. We pray especially for Nigeria and for Mozambique as they, as they experience spikes of um, uh, terrorism and violence with so many killings happening right now. Before you, rulers will stand in silence. Maranatha, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to the suffering as Savior and Comfort. We pray for all of those who are in need in our own parish, for all of those who are mentioned in our newsletter. And we pray specifically for Robert Aqua as he struggles with uh, health issues. Break into our lives where we struggle with sickness and distress and set us free to serve you forever. Maranatha. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to us as shepherd and guardian of our souls. Give us with all the faithful departed a share in your victory over evil and death. Maranatha. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come from heaven, Lord Jesus, with power and great joy. Lift us up to meet you, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Bartholomew, Saint um, Edmund, Saint Mary Magdalene, Saint Francis Xavier, all your saints and angels, we may live and reign with you in your new creation. Maranatha. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And in a moment of silence, we bring our own petitions and thanksgiving before God. Come, Lord Jesus, do not delay. Give new courage to your people to trust in your love. By your coming, raise us to share in the joy of your kingdom on earth as in, as in heaven, where you live and reign with the Father and the Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
As this bread was scattered and then gathered and made one, so may your church be gathered into your kingdom. Glory to you, O God, forever. Wisdom has built her house. She has mixed her wine. She has set her table. Glory to you, O God, forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbles himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory forever, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Bartholomew, St. Francis Xavier, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As we wait in joyful expectation for the coming of the, the kingdom, let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we wait the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you so much for all of you who are uh, watching the service uh, now, uh, live via Facebook, or who will watch the service afterwards uh, using uh, our YouTube channel. So thank you so much for following us. Let you know that uh, we resume our public services, so uh, we will be able to have a congregation from this Sunday onwards. So uh, in, a, in a way, restrictions are slightly eased, and so we can go come back to public worship. So come back to church if you're able, uh, and we have all of the um, uh, health and safety um, uh, precautions in place so that we can make uh, this place a safe place. Um, so watch the space. We will carry on. Um, we will uh, soon will be announcing them, making available a link to our um, Bible study that will um, will uh, occur during Advent as a way of preparing ourselves or as a, another tool to help us prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ uh, in this season. So let us now uh, receive God's blessing. Our Lord says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine before you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.